Welcome to Soul Space. I love preparing and leading Soul Space because it focuses on our relationship with God and having our souls connected with Him. Soul Space nourishes my spiritual and my emotional life, and I've been going, join, I've been enjoying going on this online journey with you over the last few weeks. So, what are we doing this week? Well, this week we're going to hear uh, from Chris, from our own Chris Adams, who's bringing us a thought for the day. Uh, before that, we're going to take a spiritual Holy Communion. Uh, but before that, we're going to spend about 15 minutes slowing down, becoming aware of ourselves and our bodies. And we're going to spend a bit of time looking to the Lord and spending some time in thanksgiving and prayer. All these things help us in our day-to-day -day living, sort of de-stressing us, and also help us in our relationship with God and other people. So I hope you enjoy this this next half an hour with us. And um, I hope that you take something away from it. You take some peace, you take something of God, you take something that's encouraging. So we're going to turn to prayer now. We meet in the name of Jesus Christ. We have hope because he's risen. Hallelujah. Amen. We begin in the presence of God. And now we're going to spend some time in quiet. As the Bible says, in quietness and trust is your strength. Let's take a moment just to sit down, to be quiet. Let's maybe put our feet on the floor um, and just be for a minute. Let's close our eyes. Take a breath in. Breathe in through our nose if we can and breathe out. Breathe in through our nose if we can and breathe out and just slow our breathing down. As we do so, our body naturally slows down and helps us to calm. As we sit here, I wonder how we're feeling in our body. I wonder how we're feeling today. Luke, I always love this passage, Luke records how John the Baptist leaps in Elizabeth's womb. The Bible does talk about our bodies more than we might sometimes notice. And the psalmist turns his noticing of his body to, pray, to prayer. Firstly, I'm going to read from Psalm 6. Psalm 6, if I can swing it back. Verse 2 and then verse 7. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am faint. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in anguish. How long, Lord? How long? And verse 7, my eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my woes. He turns to God in prayer. Or Psalm 13. Again, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? And every day have sorrow in my heart. How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes. But I will trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. There's this deep integration of being aware of, of his body and then turning that to prayer and saying, you know, this, this is weighing on me. And our bodies often act as signals to us. They say, they, they tell us what's going on uh, before we're sometimes aware that our bodies can say, actually, this is how you're feeling. This is how you're doing. So as you sit here, I wonder, I'm going to take a cup of coffee, take a little sip here. As you see, I wonder how you're doing. How is your body? Are you feeling hot or chilly or just right? Are you feeling really highly energized or low energy or somewhere in the middle? Are you feeling breathless, you know, anxious? Or are you feeling relaxed? Are you feeling pain in some part of your body? Or are you kind of feeling free? Are you feeling tender or warm or, or wobbly? I wonder. So what I'd like you to do is just sit here, close your eyes again. Just sit here, take a breath in. 
And notice your body. <laughs> those, those who are with me often will hear me moan about my, more just notice my back, but I'm not today. I've learned from the last few weeks and I've really worked on my back, so I'm feeling relaxed in my back. Feeling a little bit of tension in my in my shoulders. So if you're feeling with attention somewhere, just sort of loosen your jaw, loosen your shoulders, sit back a bit into your chair. And then what do you notice? Where do you notice it? How are your feet? How are your ankles? How are your knees? How are your shoulders, your hips, your back? And what do they, those, tell, those things tell you? And that practice of, of noticing and naming is a very simple one, but it's actually very powerful. Because sometimes when we notice these things, they're important and we need to do something about them. Other times we notice these things and are a signal to us that, oh, I haven't, I just haven't relaxed or actually I haven't done anything. I'm so sleepy that I've been completely unfocused all morning and actually I need to kind of get going in the day and get some focus. Or, or, or if we're beginning to notice what we've never noticed before, there's this thing called um, neuroplasticity and neurogenesis. Neurogenesis, you can create new brain cells neuroplasticity you can change the way you're thinking and actually as we notice more we actually develop our brain so all these things are healthy and all these things are good but what we want to be doing is like the psalmist is turning it to, into prayer so maybe you want to pray this prayer with me now we look to the lord Lord, as you spoke to our followers and have spoken through the ages, help me see my life through your, your eyes, not my own. I pray for the grace to pray, to see, to meet you and understand. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to spend a little bit of time in thanksgiving. Thank God for his many gifts. So we just pause for a minute and bring one thing to mind, something that you want to thank God for, something that you're grateful for. It may be that lament is uppermost on your mind first and so you want to just lament something to God uh, and, and that's completely fine. You know, the psalm is full of lament. Jesus pours out his heart to God. So perhaps it's time to lament before we give thanks. So maybe just notice something that in this time of COVID-19 that, you, that you've, you miss, you've lost, is an absence for you. And just lament that to God. Maybe you miss friends or family or a place or uh, an experience, maybe church or maybe a club or a place that you go. And Lord, we note these things to you and lament them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lamenting roots us in, the, in our day-to-day -day lives and gives us a sense of reality. But if we are only lament, we so often reach despair. And so a way out of that is also to give thanks. There's always things to give thanks to God for. So now we spend a bit of time and give thanks. Thank God for his many gifts. So just name one thing before God. Father, we thank you for the good things in our lives that come from you. Now we're going to ask the Lord to, um, or what we're going to do for ourselves to bring, our, uh, bring to mind a happy memory. So we're going to ask the Lord for memory or, and if, um, or you can bring one to mind that you want to think of that helps us to root our lives in thanksgiving. Think of the, the, the passage in the Old Testament. They, they say, you know, remember when we used to lie down in Babylon. Remember, remember that sense of remembering as they turn to God in prayer. 
you know, they say, you know, they're saying, you know, we're in Babylon and now we remember Zion. We remember the good times. And maybe you feel that you're somewhat in exile at the moment. That, you know, you're away from things. But So let's look back with thanksgiving and remember something. So, Lord, we pray that you would bring to our mind something, something good, something happy, something joyful. Something that we can bring to mind and thank you for. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, just hold your eyes closed for a minute and think of something. If there's a, a memory that's come to mind, just work with that. If you just want to think of something that hasn't happened, just think of something you want to give thanks for. So for me, there was an experience when we went away on a holiday last year and uh, there was a five of us as, as a family just enjoying the waters in Olympus. We'd done a trip where very few people go and we're just enjoying the heat of the day but cold, cold waters and it's a happy place. A special place. And I say, Lord, where are you in that memory? And the Lord is there in the creation of, of, of beauty and in, in his grace that gives us the earth and the water. The whole thing that's there. And he's also there in the joy and in the celebration as the God of the banquet, the God of the Last Supper with his friends, but also the eternal banquet when we go to be with him. And he's a God of celebration. And I just turn that to prayer. Lord, I thank you uh, for your goodness. I thank you for your love in my life. Lord, in your mercy, hear my prayer. And for you, I wonder what, what comes to mind for you what you see, what you feel. Try and bring the memory to mind. Don't just make a catalogue list of it. That works with one part of your brain, your left part of your brain, but we're trying to engage the imagination a little bit, bring it to life. Because that part just switches on our relational part of our mind, switches on the hopeful part of our mind, switches on the prayerful part of our mind. So let's bring that to life. Just what you see, what you sense in that memory. And now it's Jesus. Jesus, where are you? Where are you in that memory? What were you doing? And see what comes to mind. Maybe it's a sensation in your body or maybe a thought. It's what comes to mind for you. Now we can ask the Lord one final question. Lord, is there anything you want to show me? And uh, I just, the Lord's bringing to mind something for me in my memory and I wonder for you. What there is for you. Let's keep your eyes closed for a minute. Anything you want to say to God before we give thanks to him? Father, we give you thanks for the good in our lives that come from you. Amen. Now we stay in an attitude of prayer for a minute. We settle into our chair and we breathe and we're going to spend a couple of minutes in breath prayer now. So breathe in through your nose and breathe out. And then breathe in and out. As we breathe in, we say like something like Lord Jesus or Abba or Father or Holy Spirit, whatever, however you want to speak to God. And then as you breathe out, just pray what comes naturally to you. I'll pray something simple like, fill me with your joy this week. I've had a lot of calm. I'm going to pray for joy. But you don't need to do that. You can do something else. So as we breathe in, we go, breathe in. And we breathe out. So as I breathe in, I'm going to think, dear Jesus. As I breathe out, I'm going to say, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And we're going to do that four times. Dear Jesus. 
fill me with your Holy Spirit. Dear Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Dear Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And just hold that calm and that peace. And now we're going to look to the, t the rest of the day or the, the days ahead in the week. And as you look at the rest of the day, I wonder what feelings emerge, what comes to the surface. And whatever it is, we bring that to God in prayer. Maybe there's someone you're going to see, or maybe there's someone you're not going to see. I don't know what that might be. So think about the rest of the day and then pray into that. We're called to be active, not just passive. So pray into your day. What do you want from that day? How do you want to be in that day? Turn it into prayer. So Lord, we give you our day. We give you the thoughts that have arisen in our mind. We pray for your work in our lives. We pray the Lord's Prayer in the modern version together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Maybe now as we pray for ourselves, or we just pray that the Lord renews us. So Lord, we pray for your renewing of our lives. We pray for your blessing on our lives and in our lives, that you might use us to be your hands or your feet. Lord, help us to be aware of you Help us to see what you're doing and to live our lives in cooperation with you. That we would see your kingdom come. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray this prayer. Pray this together if you like. Pray on the screen or just listen to me pray. Do, do, keep watch, dear Lord. With those who wake or watch or weep this day, tend the sick, give rest to the weary, sustain the dying, calm the suffering, pity the distressed, all for your love's sake, O Christ our Redeemer. Amen. And now we take an act of spiritual communion. And we can't take the bread and the wine, so we pray this together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And we pray together. Abba God, may the peace of Christ fill my heart, 
May the light of Christ fill my mind. May the life of Christ flow through my family like a river. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but I feel kind of rested and joyful and connected uh, to God. And so I had a good time and I hope you did too. And now we're going to uh, move now to hear from Chris. Chris is going to uh, bring us uh, a thought for today, uh, some word from the Lord, and uh, then he's going to close our service for us. Over to you, Chris. Hello, I'm Chris Adams, and it's my pleasure to share in this service with you today. And I'm, I've chosen the reading, uh, the Old Testament reading, which was set for the day of Pentecost, the other Sunday, because I believe it speaks to us in a very practical and real way uh, about God with people when they were in a position where they would rather not be. It was uh, as Moses was leading the Israelites uh, through the wilderness towards the promised land, and he was finding the burden of leadership almost too much for him. Uh, he was particularly uh, bowed down by the complaints that were coming from people left, right and centre. And so he uh, said to God he couldn't cope, he needed help. And God told him to choose uh, 70 men who were recognized as elders and leaders of Israel and uh, to take them to the tabernacle. And this is where our Bible reading from Numbers 11 and verse 24 uh, begins. So Moses went out and reported the Lord's words to the people. He gathered 70 elders and stationed them around the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses. Then he said to the 70 elders, he sent to the 70 elders the same spirit that was upon Moses. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. But this never happened again. Two men, Eldad and Medad, had stayed behind in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but they had not gone out to the tabernacle. Yet the spirit rested upon them as well. So they prophesied there in the camp. Some people think that the Bible is old fashioned, it's out of date. Uh, it, it's not really very good at keeping in touch with life here in our all singing, all dancing 21st century. Although there's maybe a little bit less singing and dancing in some ways uh, in the coronavirus, uh, but no book I know of is more real or helpful in everyday life than the Bible. It is practical, it is helpful, and it is inspirational. One of the struggles, uh, as I mentioned, that Moses had uh, in his leadership was the negative talk. He couldn't get away from the negative talk. And we know all about this now, don't we? We really do. And the trouble is when people find it hard to trust, they question more, they challenge, and they're more open to alternative views, ideas and thoughts, and also more open to begin to criticise. And then they become complainers. It's almost a habit, and it's so easy to get into that way. And Moses was finding this is how it was with the people. And so he turned to God uh, for help. Well, that's a good example to follow. When we struggle, turn to God. That's the good advice. Now, we struggle with the uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic, and in different ways we struggle. Maybe we think it's not such a big way, but we can still turn to God. Maybe initially we were okay, but now it's beginning to get to us, uh, and the, the pressure seems to be bearing down on us. The novelty factor's gone away, and it's hard. Let's turn to God. Now, in the real world, we cannot avoid negative words. But during this crisis, there seems to be so many more negative words and we can't avoid them. We're reminded uh, through the radio, TV and newspapers of a negative. My God. And sometimes we're given examples of how things are working out better in other places with other people. And it's hard. 
Moses turned to God and God listened to him and God answered him. And that's why the 70 people were chosen and they lightened the load for Moses because God really was in a practical way answering the, the request of Moses. So let's make sure that we turn to God and also we can make choices about our thoughts too. I know Mike has been speaking a lot about this uh, in, in more detail and in uh, a very good way about helping us with our thoughts. Philippians 4, 8 and 9, fix your thoughts on what is true and honourable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. And we can think too of the nature of God as, as we know it. He is loving and faithful. He is gracious and full of mercy. See, God's kindness is loving kindness. God's goodness is great goodness. And he is always more ready to listen than we are to pray. So when things get on top, let us follow the example of Moses and turn to God. And also remember the example of Eldad and Medad, uh, two elders who'd stayed behind in the camp. I don't know why. Uh, and I've heard so many different theories and ideas of why they stayed behind. But the main thing is they were separate from the others. But they weren't separate from God. And they were not cut off from God's blessing. They were included. And you are included. You are included by God during this time. One of the hardest things we experience is separation from family and loved ones and friends. Now, FaceTime is great. Skype is great. Zoom is great to a point. And the virtual church has uh, really become something very special in lots of ways, although we do look forward to going back to our, our wonderful building. But it's not the same unless we're really with people. Nothing compares to that. So we could feel left out. But Eldad and me, Dad, were not left out. And you really are not left out today. God includes you. He includes you in his love. He includes you in his loving presence too. Let's ask God to show us his presence. Make us more aware of his presence. And really tell God how we feel. And don't be put off by the thought that other people have needs that are greater than mine or by the thought that, well, I'm not really such a good Christian as people in church think I am. And if they really found out what I was thinking or how I reacted to that news bulletin the other day, well, all Christians get it wrong. All Christians are imperfect. That's why we need to have confession and we need forgiveness as and we need the encouragement that comes as we receive the absolution that is being set free from blame. The wonderful gift of God through Jesus and the cross. It is by grace we are saved and it's by grace that we live. And don't think that God's rations might run out. He's rich. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts, and the cattle of a thousand hills. God always has enough and he has enough time for you. He doesn't hold back or operate a, a strict portion control either. My cup overflows with blessings. We read that in Psalm 23 and it's wonderful. And when we really meet Jesus, we are overwhelmed with his love. It goes on and on and on. His grace and his mercy, sufficient forgiveness for all sin wonderful wonderful love of Jesus so do tell God how you feel and do be open to his answer sometimes we think that well uh, is God hearing my prayer he always hears he immediately hears our prayers we may not immediately get an answer but God always hears God didn't say that uh, the Bible didn't say that Eldad and Medad deserved to be blessed by God, but they were, even though they were separate. The Bible didn't say that Moses always got it right, always had nice thoughts, never doubted. 
but God heard his prayer. You don't have to be better than you are now. You don't have to be different to you are now for God to hear you. And I'm just going to uh, finish this talk with the, the words from um, Psalm 91. It's from verse uh, four of 91. His faithful promises are your armour and protection. May you know that now. And may you know God's loving presence. I'm just going to close our time together with a prayer now. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are full of loving kindness. You were and you will be, but today and for us, where we are, you are full of loving kindness. And you are generous, lavish in your gifts. May we be so aware of your loving presence that we melt and relax and we open ourselves up to you. So come alive in our hearts and homes and situations and bless us now. And may we know the security and the wonder of your loving presence now and always through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So God bless you and keep you and watch over you always. Amen. Bye bye.